In this video, we are going to be designing a control system for a self-driving car. Now, this video does assume that you do have a basic understanding of the simple control systems. For example, Laplace transforms, Z transform, transfer functions, and state space models. However, if you don't, I'll put a few videos in the description below, which you can review in order to prepare for this video here. Let's break down the problem we have. The objective is to use the steering angle denoted by delta in order to control the side slip angle of the car, beta. The state space matrices and the data are all provided within the paper linked here in the description below. We will first discretize the model into the discrete time domain before applying our controller design. So before we do that, let's take a look at first our continuous system given by x dot equals ax plus bu where the matrices A and B have been already solved for. We have a negative eigenvalue. So the eigenvalues of the matrix tells you whether your system is stable or unstable. Since the vast majority of the control systems in today's world are indeed online, which means that they are computer controlled, this is why we need to apply the digital Z transform to first convert our control system from continuous time to discrete time, where T is your sampling rate. So for example, if you have a sensor on an aircraft or a car like an IMU or a GPS or something, every sensor has a sampling rate, which means that it can take in this much data every second and give you that, that much of output. Value for Z is given by E to the TS. So here we will choose a sampling rate of 20 Hertz, which corresponds to a sampling time of one over 20 or 0 0.05 seconds. Let's first convert the state space model into transfer function by using this formula and we get the following okay now when you convert a control system from analog to digital there are five ways in which you can do this they are the step invariance the mash pole zero the twistin approximation the bilinear transform and the euler's method now these are used interchangeably depending on what application you have but two of the most common ones are the step method, which is also called the zero H or the zero order hold and the matched pole zero method here, which is the MPZ method. I'm going to explain these briefly here. Basically for a discrete signal, you obtain the outputs at each time step, right? So at KT, so you know, K equals one, K equals two and so on. So what this zero order hold does is that it essentially adds a continuous step between those discrete signals. So it's like doing a step at each time approximation. The matched pole zero method will simply match the poles and the zeros, which is the roots of the numerator and the denominator in the transfer function, and they will make them equal in the continuous domain and in the discrete domain here. So let's do them by hand so you actually get a full understanding. We start with our transfer function in the continuous time. When you execute the following steps, you will obtain them in matched pole zero form. And if you check it in MATLAB, it is the exact same. So similarly for the zero order hold form, it is longer to do by hand for the function, but we can use this formula here. And if you don't believe me, let's check it out with MATLAB with this simple function here, g of s is equal to one over s plus 10. We see that the denominator for the matched pole zero method and the zero order hold method is the exact same thing with the numerator being slightly different. Now, when you design a control system, it is very much more important to look at the denominator because that tells you the stability properties of your system, if it is stable, if it is unstable, or if it is just about stable. It is a good idea to proceed with the MPZ method for now because we were able to mask the zero. Now, why I'm saying this is because in many real world applications, you have more than one controller at the same time. So for example, you can have a controller before your transfer function and one more before that, right? It depends on what you want from your system. And in control system design, it is unadvisable to cancel a pole and a zero. So that is why it is better if we retain the zero. So when we design anything in the future, we, we can avoid this issue here. All right, let's wait a second. You know how I found that before that the eigenvalues of A gave the continuous system as unstable. We can do the exact same thing for G of Z here. We will also see that the discrete system is unstable. 
as it should be. If we somehow get the discrete system to be stable, for the continuous system that is unstable, we made a big mistake and we should do it all over again. Most likely your sample time is too high and you have to make it a bit lower so we can obtain a better approximation. Alright, so now we can find our discrete state space model in MATLAB along with these transfer functions here and you see that they all match. Okay, so now we have our discrete model and let's design the controller. We'll be using LQR, which is a very common method, or the linear quadratic regulator. This is commonly used in aircraft as well because it's quite robust and you can very easily find whatever you're looking for by simply using the, the Riccardi equation, which has been used many times in the control system engineering world. The LQR formulas are shown here in detail. For Q and R, I will choose the following. I want a lot more weight on the inputs U so the system can respond quickly. This will give you the feedback gain K. You can also obtain the closed loop matrix by this formula and the transfer function subsequently, which is now stable. So here we have the Simulink implementation for your continuous system. It's pretty much your model and I added a precompensator or an integral action to cancel out any steady state error. In control design, it is very important to have at least like zero steady state error because then you design the perfect system. We can use the same concepts to design your discrete LQR. So what I'm going to do is that I will convert the closed loop system obtained from the continuous LQR case into a transfer function. Then I will discretize that transfer function and then implement with integral action or a precompensator just like how I did for the continuous LQR. So we can quickly compare the transfer functions here. You can see that by using the final value theorem that none produce any error. Because that is the whole point of adding a precompensator or integral action. You can see that the value of the precompensator is slightly different for the continuous case and discrete case. This shows how the discrete case obviously will do an approximation for your system. However, I'll just stick to integral action because that's more robust and it can work for any situation. Here we have the Simulink implementation for the discrete system. I simply used the transfer function model instead of state space and I did it. Well guys, that's it. Thank you for watching. This video was just like me talking non-stop about LQR and control systems, but the whole idea was for me to give you guys like a real world example of control system design for autonomous cars. Now, this, this video has a lot of concepts which you may not be familiar with, as I mentioned before. So I do recommend you first download this project from my GitHub. It's all uploaded there. So you can look at, look at my codes, see them for yourself and do them line by line. Because if, if I go just code them over here, it'll take a long time. So it's better if you do it on your own time. I do recommend you watch this video several times to understand the concepts because I did cover a lot, a lot of details which you may have missed. And with that being said, I wish you all a good semester if you're in school and I wish you all a good work year if you're in the, in the workforce. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Take care. Have a great day. Bye-bye.